Does he not like it? Hello, Diana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, um, just to remind our listeners, so you are, uh, your name is Diana Leaf Christian. You live in the USA, in North Carolina, in an eco village, and you spend a lot of time um, teaching um, tools to use consensus, um, consensus method, and you're teaching also how to to create eco-villages and what are things to do and not do, if I'm right. And you're writing books also sometimes. <laughs> yes, I, I wrote a book about uh, what works well and what doesn't work so well in starting new communities. Super. And actually, we are right here in Tiocan, in uh, Association Objective Gaia, is organizing with you two workshops. One, the first workshop was about eco-village design, uh, how to set up eco-village. And the second is about how to use consensus and facilitate. So um, maybe my first question would be uh, um, in teaching what... in in. Because I, I, in the first workshop, you are talking a lot about mission and purpose for mm -hmm. our co community. It's important for a community to have a mission, to be clear about its mission and purpose. And for everybody to be on the same page about what that is. What, what are we doing and why are we doing it and where are we going and why? If the group has the same mission and purpose, it reduces enormous amounts of potential conflict later. Mm. If they have a vague theoretical idea or an idealistic idea of a mission and purpose and different people interpret that different ways mm -hmm. it's almost a recipe for a big conflict later okay and my question for you in, in that in that field mm -hmm. is that because uh, you're teaching these workshops I would like to ask you I know it's a, it's a bit of a, a deep question here but what do you feel is your mission and purpose and how does this workshop fit in with your my own personal yeah mission? personal I would be interested to explore new worlds and boldly go where no one's gone before. Wow. <laughs> now, this is a joke for people who watch Star Trek, so now I will answer you seriously. All right. Okay. It looks nice. To explore new communities and boldly understand things I don't understand already and learn what tends to work very, very well and to learn patterns of interpersonal dynamics and how legal systems and government rules and decision-making and agreements and uh, conflict resolution all works together to create healthy, thriving communities and what things don't work so well, and to share this information with other groups and people who would like to start new ones. Mm. That's my mission. Ah, okay. Um, also, because in your book uh, that I read in two years ago, you are mentioning that you observed that 90% of communities were failing somewhere mm -hmm. along the way, mm -hmm. and, um, and only 10% were succeeding in creating eco-village or co-housing. Mm -hmm. And I, would like, I wanted to ask you, if you, did you observe any change over time, like in these figures, or did you observe any change like in different countries? Like, uh, Let yeah. me back up a few steps. Uh, when I made this sort of guessing observation, I didn't have data that right. was scientific data that I measured. I had a, a good guess. Yeah. And it was in the U.S. in the 1990s. Right. And it was limited to that. Another American woman who was observing forming communities made the same educated guess. She thought it was about 90-10%. Uh, at the same time, in um, Germany was a man who was observing German communities starting and failing, and he observed about 90% failure and 10% success. Um, the people in the co-housing movement in the U.S. have estimated that it's more like 30% succeeds and only 70% fails. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a higher amount of success, but still not acceptable because we'd like people to succeed if they want to live in community together. Um, I have not got the skills or the ability to assess now, like I did then, if the statistics are any different. Well, they're not really statistics, they're just my guess, good guess. Um, that's a wonderful question because I don't know how I would do it. I'd have to stop doing the work I'm doing and start calling a lot of people and asking a lot of questions to see if I could guess again if it seemed any different. Now I'm working internationally as compared to just in the U.S., so the parameters are different. And 
I don't want to stop doing the work I'm doing. It's too much fun, and I love doing it. So I think I won't know the answer to that. But uh, my hope is that I and other people like me doing this work will help people change the statistics, and in the future we'll have 100% success. I hope that's happening, and I don't know how to tell. Okay. Yeah. And um, as regarding the ninety percent failure, um, it's a double question. My first question would be: What do you think is the main uh, reason for this failure? If, if, if there is one, oh, central, there's not one. There's about six. And and my, the second question <laughs> is: If you had any advice to people creating co-housing or eco-village, what would be your your advice to them? Or, I know it's two questions here. Okay. I let you choose. It's, yeah. it's actually the same answer. Yeah. Uh, but I would make an umbrella word, intentional community, and under intentional community I'd put all the different kinds of intentional community, including co-housing, co which I believe in French is called co-habitat groupe. Habitat groupe. Yeah. And uh, eco-villages, which can take many forms, but generally their mission and purpose is to live a more ecological lifestyle and to teach other people through classes and workshops how to do that. Well, there's a lot of other different kinds of communities. So for all of these kinds of communities, I found the same factors would cause them to fail. Mm -hmm. And my advice to communities as to what to do is to, to uh, it's the same, it's the same. So what I found these communities failing was that they didn't do major important things. Mm -hmm. And then they had terrible conflict and they thought it was because of how we were behaving. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't exactly that. It was because underneath was this big problem, which I call structural conflict, because they hadn't put certain important structures in place. So my advice to group is, put these important structures in place. So here they are. A common, shared, clear mission and purpose. By that I mean what we're doing as a group and why we're doing it. So that we can return to this when we're trying to figure out what we're doing in meetings and so that we can attract people to us who want to do the same thing and yeah. repel people away from us who want to do some different thing. Yeah. So we have people doing what we're doing, uh, and together we can co-create that reality. Second, a fair and participatory decision-making method. The three that I know that I think are really good are uh, consensus, sociocracy, and holacracy. And uh, they are similar in many ways. They're fair and participatory uh, Con collecting and connecting the people. There's mm -hmm. not a boss necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Third one is uh, a clear and thorough membership process. The people who are going to join us as members, do they understand and support our mission and purpose? Are they willing to be trained, trained mm -hmm. in our decision-making methods so that when they make decisions with us, they know what they're doing and they're doing what we're doing? Uh, do we like them? Do they like us? Generally, do we get along well? Uh, is there, are there any red flags that we need to pay attention to? Um, are they willing to abide by the agreements that we have? Um, and so on. Um, another one is to write down our agreements, to make sure the agreements are fair and clear and written down, and also written down and also written down. And um, another one is that we know that we need to have skills in the left brain, budgets, contracts, strategic plans, cash flow, projections, um, legal entities, financing. And we need the right brain, the heart skills, how to get along well, how to resolve conflicts, how to speak openly and honestly and from the heart, how to listen deeply, how to feel uh, connected with each other um, through many different things we do together to help build community glue. And another one is? doing all those things to build community glue. Playing together, singing together, dancing together, eating together, working together, making decisions together, sharing stories with each other, uh, telling each other about our lives, sharing deeply from the heart things that might be bothering us, helping each other get to know each other well. And dancing and singing and playing volleyball, frisbee, table tennis, yeah. dancing, singing, plays, skits, poems, swimming, playing with the dogs, I anything that allows us to be playful like brothers and sisters and cousins and to get to know each other. And having a, a thorough, clear understanding of good communication skills. I highly recommend nonviolent communication as a way to learn how to talk to each other in a way that 
helps us feel connected and mm, feel good about each other and which reduces conflict. And also having a good conflict resolution method in place early before we actually have conflict. Mm. So those are things I recommend to groups just getting started. Mm. Oh. Thanks a lot. I think we don't have much time because you have to go back to class in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank you maybe if, if you have a last two if you want to say something more to add. But, and if not, I would just take I'd like to thank you in the name of all the association here and participants. Oh, sure. Thanks for coming to Tiokan, thanks for coming to Europe. Yes, and, uh, and thank I you hope for inviting me to Tiokan yeah. and to France. And I hope you'll come back soon to visit us. I will come back next year and next year I will actually speak of the French. Oh. My promise to you. Yeah, right, D'accord. And we wish you all the success in keeping, for training people because I think it's important that we all learn that. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>